they came to the conclusion that it's a $48 billion industry just right here in the state. It's 11% of our annual GDP is just that one industry. Um, so to see, as you said, the, the, <laughs> trying to phase out a $48 billion industry is absolutely reigniting the oil and gas wars. <laughs>
or they're just totally beholden to the wind and solar lobby that must have a stranglehold on the legislature. I, for the life of me, don't understand why when it is proven, not just in the United States, but all over the world that we can power grids. Look at France on with nuclear energy. And, and okay, I'll get off my soapbox for just a moment, but I, I am I am disappointed and disillusioned in Colorado's inability to accept nuclear as um, or just even define it as a clean, reliable resource. Yeah, it's. I was going to say that that's the point I wanted to hit on because this really was just a modest, very modest bill. It was a definitional change. It wasn't even like like there shall be nuclear by you know two years from now yeah. we decree it. It was just a very modest bill. And I was struck, I actually, I think I mentioned this in the previous show, that I actually was there in the committee when this bill was up. And I was struck by the just the amount of testimony that you got from folks across the political spectrum, all ages, folks with all sorts of different backgrounds that just said, we care about clean energy, we care about reliable energy, we would like it if the state could just recognize this uh, amazing resource for what it is. And yeah, like you said, the, the, the folks on the committee just weren't willing to go that far. Um, but I don't want to. I don't want to spend too much time getting bogged down on a bill that's already yeah, dead. We because about that last time. there are uh, plenty of other bills that are very much alive that are going to be, I think, front and center of the political battle this legislative session. Um, not least of which is a bill that was uh, introduced a week ago, as of this recording, that would phase out the oil and gas industry essentially by 2030. Um, the terms of the bill stipulate that no new drilling permits shall be issued by January 1st, 2030. Um, in a state that's the fifth largest oil producer and the seventh largest natural gas producer in the country, you can <laughs> understandably uh, come to a conclusion that that's a very big deal and it's got the industry shook and it's going to start a very big fight. But it also tells you, to your point, where our current lawmakers are on this sort of thing. It's We don't want nuclear. We want our you know, prolific, nationally recognized oil and gas industry gone. It's just wind, solar, and batteries, and, and that's sort of where we're at. You know... Um... So uh, part of me just hopes that the oil and gas industry just says fine, packs up and leaves. Good, go. Um, unfortunately, they have investments. And plus, um, my everybody knows my house where I live in Colorado is in Weld County, which is the largest oil um, producing county in the state. So it's going to devastate uh, Weld County, which, by the way, has no long term uh, debt because they pay with everything with cash because of the oil and gas revenue because Weld County has invested the time uh, and treasure to prove that you can responsibly develop your natural resources as well as be a good steward of the environment. They're not mutually exclusive. You can do both. You can walk and chew gum at the exact same time unless, of course, you're Kevin Priola who I think is, um, so he represents Weld County. He now takes, uh, he rep it's Senate District 13, which was full disclosure, my husband, John's district, John Cook, who a um, uh, longtime Weld County resident and sheriff, and then uh, went on to be a uh, state Senator from Weld County. The fact that there is a Weld County state Senator who is, um, prime sponsor on a bill to end the industry, end it by 2030. I mean, I just think it's abusive. It's abusive. Part The other part, um, it, it just goes to show that no good deed goes unpunished. The amount of times that the industry tried to work with uh, the other side, concerned about emissions, concerned about you know, what was what it was doing to the environment, how much the industry worked with them, and then to come, and then remember the oil and gas wars were over. Uh, yeah. Jared Polis declared it, you know, the oil and gas wars are over only to have them re not just reignited, they dropped a bomb on the industry and have decided and have said, um, yeah, we, we want you gone by 2030. This is the other thing, Jake, and this is personal. Listen, those people are my neighbors. Those are my, fa that's my family. I mean, I have family members in the industry, 
um, they're, they're friends, they're, they're, you see them at church, you see them in the grocery store, and they're literally telling this largest industry in Colorado, we don't want your kind here. That's how bad Colorado has become. So yes, the, the oil and gas wars are reignited in Colorado, and it comes from a Weld County lawmaker. It's just, um, I, you know, I wouldn't have believed it even five years ago. Yeah, no, the political realities of this bill are staggering to say the least, but so, as you pointed out, so are the economic realities, right? There was a, a Price Waterhouse Cooper study, I think a couple of years ago, that looked at the industry's benefits to oil, or to Colorado, rather, um, and they came to the conclusion that it's a $48 billion industry just right here in the state. It's 11% of our annual GDP is just that one industry. Um, so to see, as you said, the, the, <laughs> trying to phase out a $48 billion industry is absolutely reigniting the oil and gas wars. Um, you know, just to be transparent with the listeners, at this point, the bill has not moved. It's been introduced and given to a committee, but it hasn't moved so far. So it remains to be seen what kind of fight there will be, what kind of, if moderate Democrats get a little gun shy over this bill. Uh, but I think just the mere fact that this was introduced by a Weld County legislator, as you pointed out, no less, is emblematic of the direction things are going in energy policy in Colorado and where the political winds have shifted on this, uh, because it is, <laughs> it is a huge shot across the bow. That's absolutely for sure. And I don't think it's been, it hasn't been, um, it hasn't been, uh, it, they don't have a hearing scheduled for it yet. Is yeah, that not correct? Yet. As of and recording this, there hasn't been one yet. Um, I hope every single Weld County resident goes down there and marches on the Capitol. I hope the entire industry shows up. And I hope they, they park in front of uh, Kevin Priola's door. I mean, how does Kevin Priola actually think his Tesla was made? <laughs> Did he think, does he think there was no oil and gas in that? I mean, it's just crazy. It's crazy. But I do think, didn't it, I think the son said about it, it, it was it, a, or I don't know if it was a son or where, anyway. Dylan Roberts, who was on the, the Energy Committee, is not in favor of the bill. So a big shout out to Dylan Roberts. At least that's what's being reported for um, being the adult in the room. I was going to say, I believe he is the committee chair of the Natural Resources Committee where this was assigned. And it is a actually pretty narrowly controlled committee. And I think if he votes against it, along with all the Republicans on that committee, it might die in that committee. So to your point, if those reports are true, there is a shot that it doesn't advance out of the out of the committee, so that's good context. Didn't you you saw an interview with um, Jacques Lewis, who uh, it's Sonia Jacques Lewis, I think it is the other state senator who is on the bill, a pharmacist out of I think Denver. Um, you saw an interview with her, I, which I think had some some great points. Uh, remind me of those. Yeah, so she is, as you pointed out, uh, Priola's co-sponsor on this bill. I think she's Adams County, which again, another oh, county. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Another right. county with plenty of oil and gas workers that live in Adams County and commute to well. And there's some development that happens in Adams County as well. But yeah, she gave an interview to the Denver Gazette about this bill, basically asking her why now, why this bill, why the terms. And <laughs> one of the arguments she made, and, and I've seen this repeated, I think in the summary of the bill that was introduced as well, is that well, Colorado only uses a small percentage of the oil it produces. So, so why are we producing all this extra oil and natural gas and, and sh shipping it elsewhere? You know, that should there are resources. They should stay here. And <laughs> I, I I tweeted this out because I it literally made me laugh out loud when I read that <laughs> because the implications of that economically are that <laughs> Colorado is this autarkic economy, self-contained North Korea style yeah, right. where. We're, we're an we, island. Yeah, we're an we, island. We don't share our resources. We don't sell our resources elsewhere. <laughs> we can't benefit and, economically. And you know what? In, in, in the trade implications, we shouldn't have any of these sister cities or anything like that <laughs> where we're trying to build relationships with. Why bring other industry in? Why even bother? Because you know what? I, we should keep it all in inside. The other thing that I think is funny and we're going to talk about this, I think, um, we have a show coming up on this, but um, so she doesn't want to share our resources, 
but Colorado is headed to a regional transmission organization where we will need to get resources from other states. That's the only, that, that's the way an RTO works. Resources will be coming in and resources will be going out. That's the way that works. So um, it seems to me that she probably isn't a purist other than when it comes to oil and gas. All right. Yeah, convenient, a convenient excuse and logic for one particular disfavored yeah, industry. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're coming up close to time, so I want to cover one last bill that actually was introduced just as we were getting ready to record, uh, and it was teased before, so we kind of had an idea this was coming. But that is another oil and gas attack, uh, along with an attack on fossil fuel powered vehicles, so the majority of vehicles on the state's road. Um, and it's part of this big air quality ozone package. Uh, that at least in the terms of the reporting we've seen thus far, I haven't seen a bill number just yet, will uh, pause, they love the word pause, put a pause on oil and gas drilling between the months of May and September every year going forward because of the, those are the high ozone months. And it will also direct the Colorado Department of Transportation to uh, come back to the legislature in a few years with recommendations of how to limit your vehicle miles traveled in your fossil fuel cars. So faceless unelected regulators will soon be coming up with new standards for how much you uh, are allowed to drive, at least according to this package. So uh, another shot across the bow, uh, to say the least. I struggle to remain civil in the face of some of these bills. I dislike, I, I don't just dislike the bill, I dislike the intent of the bill, which is to limit mobility and freedom. Um, so the, the funny thing is about ozone, Colorado's out of attainment just naturally. Rocky, you'd have to like literally flatten Rocky Mountain National Park to put, it, it's out of attainment just naturally. Um, but but the, the, again, the authoritarianism, we're going to limit the amount of vehicle miles you can travel in your fossil fuel fired vehicle, we're going to limit your, uh, we're, we're going to limit, not only are we going to ban drilling, but then we're going to limit the months in which you can actually do it. Um, and then uh, eliminate the ability, uh, the purchase of the, inter you know, a car, uh, internal combustion engine vehicle by 2035, we actually are going to start to make California look smart. <laughs> they are going to be, um, and, and and that's a whole lot of crazy. The Colorado is committing economic suicide, literally committing economic suicide. Cool. Because here's the other thing: what about truckers? What about people who deliver goods? What about people who go through the state delivering goods? I, I, I mean, the, the state is committing economic suicide and there's really nothing, I mean, there's there's no one to stop them. Yeah, no, it's a good point. People, it, it, it speaks to no our, 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 our sort of overriding principle that energy is a fundamental input into everything. And so when you're taking these, I'll just be honest, heavy handed, almost draconian steps to try to, uh, can artificially restrict the supply of that energy that just so happens to power the vast majority of everything we do as the economy currently sits, you're going to have knock-on effects, as you said, truckers, anyone anyone that takes a car, anyone that still commutes. I know remote work is up, but it's not the majority of folks. That, uh, people still have to get around, uh, take their kids to school, pick them up. You know, This is something that's going to touch every single Coloradan if it goes through. Um, and as you said, it's, uh, it, it's going to have, I think, deleterious effects at this, you know, replacement EVs and that sort of thing is not going to happen overnight. Um, so I just don't think, I don't know where the thinking is. It's almost magical thinking that if we just, if we just will it hard enough, if we just do a bill restrictive enough, we can, we can will this into being. And I just don't think I, the material reality supports that. So here's my prediction real quick. Um, no matter how much of this stuff they, they do, it's never coming to fruition. It just won't. It, 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 it's impossible. Um, they're not going to get their 100% renewables because the transmission costs and every all the other costs are too high. They're not going to get... 
they're not going to get a ban on drilling because whether it's whether they're sued in the courts or somebody somebody gets uh you know somebody does the right thing maybe it's Dylan Roberts and says no and um the other one on ozone attainment even if it passes again I I just don't like the math doesn't work none of it works yeah. so if we have a little bit of time. I know I teased the end. I do want to touch on one more sort of humorous bill, kind of a bad bill. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Kevin Priola, he's a co-sponsor on this one, uh, and that is to provide tax incentives for data centers. Um, and so we sort of fundamentally, you know, at least where I come from, I, I just don't like the idea of providing tax goodies to big corporations that are probably going to build this stuff anyway. Why do they need my tax money to do this when they have billions upon billions of dollars? But I think it's sort of humorous that the same, you know, Priola was on the committee that voted down that nuclear bill, right? So the same lawmakers that don't want baseload, reliable, clean power that would be necessary for these to operate these sort of data centers are also trying to incentivize more of these data centers to show up on Colorado's grid as it substantially gets more fragile because coal is going away. Natural gas, they're telling it, it can only be used as a peaking resource, so it's only operating some of the time. I'm not, once again, it goes back to the magical thinking. I'm not seeing the long-term strategic planning here that you want to incentivize these huge sources of new load on the grid. And, and data centers are just <laughs> massive sources of load on the grid. <laughs> but you're not going to allow powerful generation to support those data centers. And I just, I'm not seeing where this connects. Do you just wonder what, like, what they think about, I'm going to ban oil and gas drill and we're going to get rid of all the base load. And then we're going to add incentives for companies to come, data centers to come in, and they are giant drains on the grid. I, I'm not saying don't do, don't, um, you know, I'm not saying ban data centers. I'm just saying if you're going to incentivize data centers, you know how you incentivize them? With cheap, reliable power. Sure is it with uh, tax rebates and sales tax rebates. That isn't it. You incentivize them with cheap, reliable power because the number one input into a data center is power. Um, that's why, uh, is it Kevin Leary from uh, Shark Tank who said, New York's a loser state because of the, the, of the, of the, this was, it had to do with the business unfriendliness, but he talked about specifically data centers and the states that he's looking at are states that have, um, inexpensive, reliable power, North Dakota, Oklahoma, and West Virginia. You know who would be considered a loser state in there would be Colorado because our electricity is expensive and getting more expensive and our land is expensive and our power is going to be unreliable. So um, I think it's cute that they think that some tax rebates are going to bring data centers here, when in reality, what they need is affordable, reliable power, as you said. And of course, at the top of it is Kevin Priola. No shock. Oh, one thing I think is telling is that a lot of these uh, major companies that need data centers, think you know Google, Apple, uh, Microsoft, Meta, they are actually you know out of market, working privately with you know, geothermal firms, nuclear firms, because they know they need 24 seven power. They need to be able to count on 24 seven reliable, abundant power to power these things. These things are central to their operation. And so you're seeing projects all across the country where these folks are actually saying, we need these sources of baseload power for this to be viable. And unless Colorado changes its tune, I don't understand how tax incentives are gonna do anything other than maybe get a couple built here, but it's gonna be a huge load on the grid that may or may not support it. Well, and to your point, and you wrote about it, Project Red in Nevada. Um, they, you're you're absolutely you're 100 right. Um, these data centers are looking at partnering with with private companies, and so it's all private capital. Build a project and uh, get it permitted, and and obviously it power the grid. But here's the other thing, Jake. If you remember on that project. Um, they were looking at vertically integrated states. They're not looking at RTO regions. They're looking at vertically integrated states. Um, Utah is a big one, Nevada, West Virginia, same thing. I mean, well, parts of West Virginia, I think are in PJM, but what they are looking for is a surety on reliable power. 
they want to meet their um, ESG goals, so their emissions goals, and they're looking for it, but they need reliable power, which is why they're looking at things like geothermal, small-scale uh, modular stuff reactors. They are not looking, and, and, and in a quiet moment, they'll say they can't, they know that wind and solar are inefficient and not reliable. And they can't, if they can't power their data center 24 seven with quality power, they're not coming. Yeah. There's no tax rebate that is going to lure them. So yeah, I think it's kind of cute. Yeah, and that's actually a good teaser for a future episode where we're actually going to take a deep dive between the different the differences between vertically integrated states and RTO states. So um, before we wrap up for the day, uh, you know, just give the listeners maybe what what can they leave this episode with? What, what's the big roundup of this episode? What should they remember <laughs> going forward? Uh, okay, so a couple of things. Um, one is that Colorado is is hostile to clean, reliable power. I, so remember that that we a couple of several times people have tried to get nuclear included in the portfolio and they can't get. And even Excel's looking to get it included. And Pueblo, I, I, I mean, we should say if, if as long as um, the state can as the legislature continues to be hostile to nuclear. It, it should just be called the Let's Screw Pueblo um, Caucus, because that's really what it is. They're hostile to clean, reliable power. So remember, anything nuclear, um, until there's a change of the guard down at the legislature, is not going anywhere in the, in the Colorado legislature. I would also say another thing, when we look at energy bills, so if you walk away from this, walk away, Colorado hates nuclear, and we're committing economic suicide by killing the golden goose, our Colorado oil and gas uh, industry, $48 billion. And then um, just look at any bill Kevin Priol is on. Um, it, it, chances are it's going to be bad for the state. I, you know, I don't like to get personal on this stuff, but seriously, it, it, it is um, his bill's it is economic suicide. One more thing, get a generator. <laughs> That's always going to be my get a generator. You know what? We should consider a show that's a deep dive on generators. We can just talk about generators. I know I'd love it. Of course, maybe might be three of us actually watching, but I'd be one of them. <laughs> and all three of us will be cheering at all the interesting <laughs> content that's going to help us keep the lights on going forward. Um, but that's all we've got time for this week. Amy, thank you for joining us remotely on this show. Um, li listeners, if you like what you heard here, uh, please be sure to share this with your friends, your family, anyone you think would be interested in Colorado energy issues. Um, you, they can find us wherever you find podcasts these days. We're on YouTube at IITV, the channel. Uh, you can find us at Apple, Spotify, pretty much anywhere you get podcasts. Um, if you have any questions for Amy or myself, or you want to recommend show topics or guests going forward, you can reach out to us at info at powergab.org. That's info at powergab.org. We, we would love to hear from you guys, and uh, thank you for listening. <laughs>